Hello everyone, welcome back to Tourism Overhaul. I'm your host Kerry Hall and we're here today on location at the beautiful Little Arches Hotel located in Enterprise Christchurch. Now the reason why we're here today is we're back talking about the whole issue of culinary tourism. Now we spoke to Chef Peter Eady a little while ago about this topic and I've decided today to take a, a little bit of a different twist and to speak to two of Barbados's hottest chefs right now, Chef Damien Reed and Chef Damien Leach. Now, culinary tourism is one of the fastest growing niche areas. It is an area where it's a very lucrative area. It is one where a lot of visitors are traveling to new destinations, looking to experience their local cuisine, looking for authentic experiences. And we want to talk today with these young gentlemen about the evolving culinary scene in Barbados, the changing behaviors of the modern day traveler who are looking for more real and authentic culinary experiences and how Barbados could best capitalize on this trend. So I look forward very much to this conversation today. So the two gentlemen are inside waiting for me. So let's go in there and start this conversation. Okay, good day, gentlemen. I'm so happy to have both of you here. The two Damians, yeah. <laughs> um, who I deem to be two of the hottest chefs right now on the scene in Barbados. And I know we have a lot of really good chefs, but I, I've been doing my research on the two of you and, and, and the good work that you've been doing. And I just felt compelled to have this discussion. Um, this is one of the areas that I'm focusing on, uh, along with a lot of other areas, as a, a real niche area that Barbados can totally capitalize on and do very well. And I know you have been doing great work um, in your respective fields. Yeah. I know you Appreciate restaurant, it, yeah. you do your, your personal chef work. Yeah. And um, I'm so happy to have the two of you here. Thank you so much for agreeing to join me. No problem. Yeah, gentlemen. No problem. Most welcome. Yes, I call them the two Damians. We were talking about who I was going to call Damien Reed, Damien Leach, <laughs> Damien R, Damien L, but we'll work it out as we go along. We'll work it out, guys. I just first want to learn a little bit about you. But before we start, I just want to know, as I've asked all of my guests, how has COVID treated you or impacted you? Are you still here with us fighting the good fight? Yeah, for sure. For me, for, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I, the first part of um, COVID, the early last year, um, it, 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 it took a, a lot of getting used to, you know? Yes. Um, obviously, you're home for a while and stuff. So I basically took the time to, you know, revamp menus, um, come up with new ideas, new themes, you know? Um, restructure my business, see how we can push it forward. And for me, COVID has done me well for that, that part. And then when everything opened back up again, um, I found more clients wanted that intimate um, setting. So I would say I, was a, I, I positioned myself the right, the right space. That is really good. To, um, to really push. So, so I would say COVID gave me a little lift. Yes, I think, <laughs> I think this period has tested us and it's forced us to adapt, adapt. And that's pivot. A, that's exa exa and I know you have adapted. Yeah, correct. Even at the restaurant, the restaurant, um, thankfully, I, I can't complain, the restaurant has been doing um, fairly decent mm -hmm. because what was important when we opened there is we wanted uh, to focus on locals. I didn't want just to depend on, on, on tourists. Mm. So we had a good local following. So the restaurant still has decent numbers, not fantastic, mm. but I mean. But under the circumstances, you're keeping your, yeah, yeah, your head it, above it, yeah, water, correct, which you're grateful for. Exactly. Because many businesses have not survived, as you well know. So the yes, fact yeah, you're still with yeah. us is great. So I'm, I'm very happy to that, I'm appreciative. Um, but yeah, uh, adapting, because I never did, well, I used to do takeaways, but it was just, it was just like, if somebody mm. asked, I'd do it. Yes. Now we're promoting that more, and we're doing a lot of takeaways involved with delivery services and that kind of thing. A lot of, and a lot of people are, are doing that now. Takeaway is Do you is think it's like the new normal? Because this is like this has changed. COVID has forced us to change and in many ways has made us kind of look into new segments that we may not have looked at if we were yeah. just comfortable and complacent and the whole issue of delivery, et cetera. Do you think even when we get back to normal that you would still do that or uh, are you fine? Uh, and not just you, just businesses in general will see that now as an extra um, yeah. revenue yeah, or sure. you think you'll be like, no, we're not doing any more, come to the restaurant. Yeah, for or sure. you see the delivery and that as a real yeah, revenue uh, earner that correct. we could still 100%. concentrate I, I, on after. Yeah, I, we're, gonna, we're gonna keep doing that going forward. I think the convenience is where everyone get yes. accustomed to know so. Very I true. definitely think taking that away is like... No. Like you know. we have changed, like what has come out of COVID which is so interesting is, and this is what we have to look at as well, 
the big change in consumer behaviors. Yeah. And just like how after 9-11 things changed, travel was never same, the same again. Yeah. The recession in 2008, it, things changed as Correct. well. The same thing is going to happen with COVID, where we adapt and we are not going back. So I Correct. think, guys, the delivery and the that yeah. service will be here to stay. Yeah, but sure. it was incremental revenue, so yeah. I'm sure. And, and customer convenience is, yeah. is paramount. No, it's, so it's it, that's the direction we're going in. Exactly. The business will pivot. So yeah. I think you all have done a good job. I'm glad to see that you have survived. And I think yeah. we're seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, for sure. But for right sure. now, I'd like to know a little bit more about the two of you. Why did you choose the color knife feel? What, what made you, why and how? What made you want to become chefs? Well, mine, mine, mine is a story that I've, I've told many times over the years. Um, when I was at school, St. Michael's, or well, bigger St. Michael's, right? <laughs> I was, I was, I was very Bobby Hiff. Really? What? I never believed that. You ever try to ask anybody at St. Michael's, Damien Leach? Uh, my daughter going there now, right? But you <laughs> name a little better now. The legacy better still lives on. <laughs> I get real trouble. So I was in art in second form, and I was, I was playing the fool as usual. And the art teacher had enough of my nonsense, and she kicked me out. So I was like, all right, cool. So I was just walking about in the year ahead, Mr. Giddens, coming. He said, so we don't know here. He said, well, you get kicked out. He said, well, you can't just be out here. I can put you in food and nutrition. I said, all right, another class to fool around in. And I was said day two. I came home, I told my mom, I said, Mom, I want to be a chef. From really? here on, that's that. The and rest was history? Yeah. And that's the star right. was born? That was it. That was, that was, wow. that was it. You see how funny life is? I know, right? Well, just by happenstance, that occurred, and it just shows yeah. whatever's for you, your Go destiny, Every, yeah, you yeah. will always everything, find everything that Everything happens path. for a reason, I, I, I believe. That's, uh, so I, after I being a bad behavior boy <laughs> and be very naughty uh -huh. you then went in there and found your calling and yes. did you calm down and start to behave after when you found I, I that love and you and that passion i still gave trouble because uh -huh. you don't just get that way so no right? no no but, no you can't but, but i was i know how you're focused correct i didn't wow. get in trouble in food nutrition and then obviously palm ring and then when i went to palm ring i was mm -hmm. top of my class and that kind of thing which was a new a new thing for my parents to hear <laughs> so. That's a brand new experience. Yeah, <laughs> top of the class. That's so. That is really a nice story. That is. That I like stories yeah. like that when you're the underdog, and then all of a sudden you find your calling, yeah. and then you rise to the, the top of your game. I think that's a really, really good story. Yeah, my my is pretty much similar to Damien. Two barbecue yeah. boys are you dealing with. <laughs> that's <laughs> Damien is. That's yeah. Damien. That's what I want to say. So please don't tell me my Damien is, has more of a beard. My is the ear. Oh, a N. A N. And yours is A N. Oh, yeah. oh Lord. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Should I be a little nervous here, guys? <laughs> <laughs> These two stories running parallel. So basically, um, my starting in school as mm -hmm. well. Um, I was in I was in fourth form at the time, um, mm -hmm. or fifth form. I can't remember. Upper school, and I had no idea of what I was going to do after I finished school. I had no focus really. Um, I didn't really like much things, but probably the same art, you know, and it was just one day, I was, I was in a class, I can't remember if it was a food and nutrition class, but it was a demonstration class. Mm -hmm. And a student, one of my, my peers, she invited her mom, her mom came to, to do a demonstration on food, she was a chef. So I was like, let me, let me see what this thing really about, you know, and I, I stood and I watched and I saw her put together this thing and I can't remember what it was, but I remember at the end, the end result was beautiful. And I was like, Shh, I wish I could do that, you know, I think, I think I could do this. I think I want to do it. It lingered in my mind for a while. And from there, I just, um, I just start cooking right there then. I, I enrolled to Palmer when I finished um, and I got through basically. Um, I, I had, I, I, I enrolled into Polytechnic as well, but I didn't get through there. Um, but I got shot at Pomerine and when I went to Pomerine and I had the interview, I had a good interview, mm -hmm. told him I love cooking from young, which was not true, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Anything to get it right? But I, I, I need to get the job done. <laughs> I, I, I need to get the job done. But when, when the guy told me, you got to do mass, you got to do law, you got to like, mm -hmm. I went back yeah. home and told my mom, mom, you could believe to cook. You got to do all of these things. Man, if I get in there, I ain't going nowhere. Um, lo and behold, I didn't get into the same polytechnic, I get into Pomerine. And I had no choice but to go because it was nothing else. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to do it. So, you know, I, 
I, I, um, I applied myself. You know, the first year was, was a little rocky. But then the second year, I really, I really, I really got my foot in and things started to, started to do much better. So that's, that's, really that's, that's the start of my, my journey. So, and well. how did your journey continue into like being a personal chef and doing what you do now? Because um, I know I'll come to you <coughs> next, mm -hmm. but like, take, bring us up to now. Oh, so, this so is how I, you started. How did you get here? I, I worked in the, in the hotel industry for a number of years. I can't quite remember. And... I think it was at a restaurant at the time. I, I wasn't, I wasn't too happy about the restaurant. See, I love the re restaurant service. I like, I like a lot of stuff about the restaurant. But I found that um, I wanted, I wanted to do a little more. I, I get, I get bored pretty, pretty easy. I, my mind always goes. I'm, well, I'm creatives a creative, do. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So after a certain time, the restaurant began, you know, it, it began to feel a little stagnant. So uh, a friend of mine. He used to, he still does, he, 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 he managed a, a villa, villa service for chefs. And he invited me one day to just, you know, try it out. And I, I loved it, you know, and the first, the first week I did well, everyone was happy with the food and stuff. And, you know, it was getting a chance to, to express my creativity. So I delved right in from there. Um, mm -hmm. I guess that's how it started for me. It just, from there, it just... I stopped with the restaurant and I went, I went on with the personal chef service. So you do personal chef and you also like design menus and yeah, stuff like that yeah, for yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course there, you're yeah, quite yeah. renowned now so people know you're being sought out. Yeah, sought for after sure. For sure, yeah. To design menus, etc. Yeah, I, I, do, I do menus, I do consultations, private chefs. I, I also have a pop-up. Just before COVID, I had a pop-up called Bats Rock to Bathsheba. Um, it was well received the public. Um, it was like a five course dinner I did for Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. um, I love the beach. I love, love, love the beach and I love the kitchen so I just merged the two. And how's the response of uh, the, the Barbadian people to you because you could actually go into their homes now you find yeah. that Bajans are now more open whereas probably back in the day yeah, they yeah, weren't yeah. too open but I think now we're very yeah, open for to sure. yeah. this the bringing in somebody. Um, some to do a book, wonderful meal, etc. Some book villas, so they, they want me just for the weekend to have a nice dinner for the birthday party or anniversary celebration or you know stuff like that. Mostly, okay. it's it's usually a celebration, especially now with people not all that comfortable. Yes, yes. From COVID, yeah. I find so you that find this working out for you because it's, calling it's, in it's a personal chef out, yeah, and yes. I, I, I so COVID, let me say COVID is bad, but COVID has also benefited in weird ways. Yes, you yes, know some yes, folk to, because true. in your case, it, yeah, people it would be all a, people are all about the intimacy right now. Yes, so that's why provide so. And you provide intimacy. See right. how it working out? Yeah. Okay, I'll be coming back to you shortly in terms of the type of cuisine that you like to, you know, sure. actually cook and why. But I'll head over here to, <laughs> to Damien L. I've known about you for quite some time. I was so proud of you when you won Chef of the Year and brought that goal home for Barbados. Mm -hmm. And in essence, by Chef of the Year, it meant that, well, you were the best chef in the region, right? You beat out everybody else. Yeah. Stop, don't be modest. <laughs> just let me keep yeah, it. Yeah, it'd be everybody in competition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess the best, the best is at the competition. Yes, yeah, for sure. Right. So you were the chef of the year, which means you were, in essence, the best chef in the region, um, which I think is a fantastic, spectacular achievement. And okay. let me congratulate you again. You. you just reminded me that I gave you the prize you did. You at did. the BHD award ceremony. Mm -hmm. And I was so proud when I saw that it was you I was giving it to because um, when the team did come back and you brought home the goal, I just saw this is so amazing, yeah. and I, you know, give I, you all I, the respect. I got, just got goosebumps. All the other. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It, it, it was a special moment for me. No, it was a real yeah. special moment. So, I mean, I know you, Cocktail Kitchen, I know you, so I don't know what else you do. I know for sure Cocktail Kitchen, mm -hmm. because I love the menu. I've not been there in a while, yeah. but now that I'm talking to you, I have that on my yeah, got, immediate got through, yeah. bucket, micro bucket list. Um, we always, and I always met with my girlfriend, who was, in the environs here right now. And I loved your department. I think these small bites. Yeah. I loved it. We just used to go and buy like five or six of those and just clean up the plates. That's usually what I recommend, to be honest. No, I, I love I, them. I, I like, I like, if, I, me, if me and your wife go I'm there, a, that's I'm a I taste get, the plate girl. Yeah. I'm a tapas taste exactly. the plate girl. Exactly. That's um, a few it. drinks and yeah. just a collection of good food and you just pull from each plate. Correct. So 
I remember when I was told that, you know, the gentleman who had won, he is the one who's responsible for this menu. And I was like, oh my God, I really love that menu. So can you tell us a little bit about what it is, you know, what you're involved in, what you do? Um, how did you win Chef of the Year? What was your winning dish? And um, what did it take to get there? Because I think that is such a, yeah. a, a spectacular achievement. Yeah, because... So that's is a long time ago now. But um, how many years it, ago was that? About that four? that one was twenty sixteen. Really? Yeah, the Caribbean Chef of the Year yeah. was twenty sixteen. Oh, it seems like sooner than that, but yeah, still no. good. Yeah. I'm sure you still go back today and give them a run. Yeah, well, I, well, I still I still compete. Okay. Well, not but not with COVID now, but I've, right. I've 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 won some other things since that. Yes. Overseas, but um, twenty sixteen was was a defining year for me and my career. I always try to make that Barbados team. I want to make that Barbados team real bad, you know. Mm. A lot of people see that I've made the team a few times now and this thing with Damon just he just they just like him. Mm. Yeah. I tried out for that team. Yes. So you actually have for to like years. audition yes. for the well, team. Well it's a cook off. You have to compete so locally yeah. with each other to get to the next level. Correct. So like for five years I tried and I get beat every year, every year. And then mm. my wife was like, Just just don't bother like No, <laughs> that was no I was you like, had to I was dig like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> So twenty sixteen came and I won Barbados Chef of the Year, and that, that's what would have put me on the team. So finally I got that right, and it was like, oh, thing, right? This is the team jacket I wanted, this jacket, that is right? Such a, like, that's a story of perseverance. That is so nice, because I would have thought, like, Chef of the Year, you just walked in, did nah. it, you were talented. Not that you kept training and failing and training and training, and then every, finally that made that victory even sweeter. Sweeter, yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. So then I did this that. This is such a nice story, yes. And then I, then I made the team, and then we trained, we, we trained for... We trained for about five months before we go to Miami, and then we, I went up. They picked somebody to do Chef of the Year for the Miami one, though, and they had picked me. And I went out there, and, and I won I won Caribbean Chef of the Year, and my grandmother and my grandmother went there and watched it, too. And, oh. and that was that was crazy. That so what did you cook? What did you prepare? Did well, you it, it's a mystery basket competition, right? So I think I had lamb and shrimp and something else. But it was a, a Beijing marinated lamb loin um, with, uh, I did a, a salt fish and a roast corn creme brulee. Mm, um, liking it. With a smoked sweet potato and shrimp croquette, spice braids, eggplant. So this was good Beijing food. Well, that's, that's what, it's, it's, that's what the Caribbean thing is. The flavors yes. have to, they, they have. Be it's, Caribbean, it's, a yeah, Caribbean have, infused type of They have to be strong. Theme. I think I had a papaya mm. jelly. Salsa jelly and that kind of thing. There's a lot of components, right? Because competition is, is as any restaurant, maybe you just have a, a few components that all work well. Mm. It's a competition. No, you can't just do that. Right. So you have to have many different yes. um, components like and, and yeah. textures yeah. and yeah, flavors and to colors. And the mixologists a couple of weeks ago, and they consider them to be scientists in terms of how they fuse all these different flavors, et cetera, and what the magic they create. And y'all are scientists too, because you got to... Yeah. No yeah, flavors yeah, and textures and be able yeah. to do that because you got to know which spices and herbs will go to well with each correct, other, complement yeah. as opposed to not. Because that's how the food ends up tasting good. Everything has to complement each other. Correct, correct. So that is really, really good. So, so, so yeah, and then, then that was that. And then I opened um, Cocktail Kitchen. That competition was in June. We opened Cocktail Kitchen in July. So everything just lined up. I just came out of Barbados with this big title. And then the restaurant opens up. Mm -hmm. Now the restaurant has a little bit of mm -hmm. a, a buzz the around it. Know. Yeah, correct. The hockey so, chef. This the so every the every chef at our every, restaurant. Everything just lined up, and then I then I finished off 2016 with the I won Nifka Chef of the Year and the Governor General's Award of Excellence. So that was 2016. So wait, you new restaurant. Clean yeah, new restaurant, and then I won all three competitions that that, that year. So. So let me Everything. ask you a question. That was a year, boy. That was that was that was a right. year. That, that was, was that was the <laughs> year. I will never have another year like that. But that was yeah, a no, good boy. year. Yeah, that was. Some people don't even have that type of year. So yeah. at least you had it. So that's great. But I want to ask you something. You find um, you won, and I know Barbados. The team also won gold, and has won gold in yeah. other years. There is a really a two-part question because when you talked about the type of food that you cooked. Mm -hmm. And you see that reflected on the cocktail kitchen menu. Because yeah. um, we could have Beijing cuisine um, or locally made or prepared food. It could just be local produce, local fish, seafood, mm -hmm. meats, and it could be cooked in any, any way, but you're supporting the local agricultural sector. Or it could be a traditional 
Bajan meal that is refined, yeah. refined Bajan cuisine, and or just f flavors and themes yeah. of, of Barbadian food Correct, yeah. through it, but mm -hmm. still at an elevated level. Do you, the way you cook, and I know that's the way you cook, I read, yeah. read up on you, yeah, sure. <laughs> read the article on you, and actually Damien was right across the way with his new venture, but do you see changes in that? Because sometimes typically we just do local fare is marginalized for American or European food. That has been traditional for years in Barbados. We bought in executive chefs from overseas mm -hmm. yeah. rather than giving our boys a chance. I'm seeing a, over the years, a couple of our guys have risen to executive yeah, yeah, chefs, sure. thank God. So yes. there's been an evolution there. But do you see on the menus around Barbados that happening with where y'all there that infusion of Caribbean food or local food mm. even if it's at a refined level or presented in a refined way or do we still have a ways to go there yeah. are we improving have we improved or do we I still have, go a I little have bit seen, to go? I have seen changes right I Good. have seen changes from moving to a uh, more European French style of cooking um, importing a lot of produce um, to, to make something you know uh, from from foreign, mm -hmm. where um, it's fine, it's okay. You know, yes. we, we there's a place for we, it. Yes, it, a there, there is a place for, for it. But and there's a ex, you know people sometimes yes. demand that fear. People come and want the food they're accustomed to, exactly. but that's kind of shifting now. Yeah, but it, it's it's having a shift in in some spots that I have been to. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen more if like people working with more farmers. You um, see a lot more, more I'm seeing from the table having, pop up a little bit more. We may not be there yet, but I'm yes. seeing a move in that direction, which Correct. is good. The in ingredients being fresh, you know, and I always appreciate fresh ingredients. I love to work with, with fresh ingredients and I love to see fresh ingredients on a menu. Um, well, the food tastes different too, you know. Yeah, of when course. you taste fresh food, you would never yeah. go back to frozen because yes. it definitely tastes it's, different. It's a total, total Better. different. So I, I've also seen locals embracing the change. And that's what you want. So it, when they embrace the change, it encourages the chefs to um, come up with something new, something more exciting, you know, something that they're familiar with and pair it with something they're not familiar with. Maybe it might be a technique. Correct. Maybe it might be a new look on things, you know, a new twist, a new dimension of, of, of a dish that you say, oh, wow, I would never think of that, you know. So it is, it is you know, one by one changes are occurring. And you can't really see a Barbie. That's for me. I, but I see it. Sorry, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're gonna get that with the with, with the, the new chefs that are coming out now. Years ago, Barbados, we bought him. We bought him a lot of chefs, and for what? I don't know. We bring them in, and we paying them, ripping money more than we pay the locals. Yes. Um, but that that we are getting away from that now. I've seen a lot of local chefs. Yeah. Um, heading restaurants and and, and hotels. And obviously, that you, the more of that you get, the more you can see our our, our food and our products. We bring in a man from UK; he can come out here. He can he can do he can yeah. do what he can do. He can do what he want. 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 He can um, and the, the younger ones that are coming up now, they're more they're more passionate about about our our, our food and our, our products and that kind of thing. Um, and like you said, taking taking something when my my kind of cooking, I like to use Bajan ingredients. I, I never I never say that this is a traditional Bajan Bajan thing. I don't yeah. want to kind of call the kitchen thing. You can get a traditional Bajan right. dish. That's not yes. that's right. not the case. Yes, I'm gonna take traditional Bajan things and I'm gonna I'm gonna twist them and 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 thing. But it's gonna be it's going to be local product. I can't be cooking um, Bajan food or, or Caribbean. Let's, let's yes. broaden it. Yes. And without using those ingredients. It has to start with that. Mm -hmm. It has to be Caribbean ingredients mm -hmm. to be Caribbean, Caribbean Correct. food. Correct. The roast bread, for you said that the people like to see something that they could like, usually get a little twist. One of the most popular things on my menu, well, like, it, it came off now, but that was the roast bread fruit with the lobster and salt fish. Mm -hmm. And the tobacco, that, that, that went... I went crazy because mm -hmm. I, I couldn't just take a, a roast breadfruit and sell it because obviously it's a restaurant. It's yeah. it, it, it can cost a little more. You make, oh, make yeah. the roast breadfruit. I, I can, I can I, do that. Yeah. I pick that roast breadfruit <laughs> from my right, grandmother right, tree right, and yeah, I go exactly. do that. It's you my mom to, you to the thing. Exactly. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So that's already lobster and <laughs> salt <laughs> fish. Yes, yes. Cool yes. But then it's lobster and the salt fish combo. Correct. Because that is like, eh, eh, eh. And you're bringing it together. Very creative. Very creative. And I love the creativity because... 
like what you're saying, there are two things you just said, and we have a food import bill of almost $700 million, Barbados. Mm -hmm. um, so by cooking local and, and supporting the local agriculture sector and keeping that foreign exchange here at home yeah. and, 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 and cutting back on, you know, doing import substitutions where we don't have to import everything. We can grow it here and, and it makes its way onto the plates in the, in the restaurants. Mm -hmm. And that is an area that, that is very, very important. And that's why it's so important to know that it's being consumer driven because you find the consumers, maybe be visitors or even Barbadians, are now looking for and demanding this type of food. Yes. So yes. even if you don't want to do it, but if you're a business and you want to make mm. profits, you're going to go by what the consumer is saying. That's but I think it's a win-win situation. Is a win-win for Barbados. Is a win-win for the intersectoral linkages with tourism and agriculture. Is a win-win for the economy by keeping that foreign exchange here at home. The visitor gets what they want—a phenomenal, yeah. delicious, um, Caribbean-inspired meal. And and I think it does a lot for our pride as a mm. people, maybe Barbados or a region, where we can stand head and shoulders with any other region in the world, yeah. and our food can be counted. And I I know Caribbean. Food is delicious, is rich in history and culture. And like I said, do you think that, and I, I think I'd put this out to you all, where there are places you go for food, you know, you go to France and Italy and mm. Thailand, do you not think it's high time that the Caribbean region should be a region where people come here? I know they come for Sansi and Sun, we have fed them a steady diet yeah. of Sansi and Sun for like 70 or more years. Do you not think that we could now move the dial and put that structure around the Caribbean where people actually come. I know they come and they eat, mm -hmm. you yeah. know what I mean? 53% mm -hmm. of travelers say they eat, they travel for food. Um, we know that they spend a third of money on the food. They have to eat three times a day. So it's mm -hmm. a very lucrative. Yeah. And if they're looking for food, let's give them the type of food they want, but let's do it our way. And I think the Caribbean region, each island has its own different flavor and, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and, and the Caribbean to me is like the culinary crossroads of the new world, like the food game from Africa it's, and Europe and yeah. here, and yeah. then yeah. we yep. just shot it out yeah. to Central, South America, the deep South in America. Do you think, are we looked that way or you think food gets second billing and we can move in that direction where people are, at, foodies are actually leaving their home and saying, I go to the Caribbean for the food down there, it's crazy. Or even to Barbados for the food. Do you but, think that we are there yet or we can move in that direction? Well, from my experience doing personal mm -hmm. chef work, uh, about, I would say 80% of the people that I would, I would have done from abroad, um, they always want Caribbean cuisine. They always want Beijing. They always want local food. Yes. And that it's also huge. is what, what really, mm -hmm. I really pushed, um, you know, Beijing cuisine in that way because of them. Um, they always want a different experience. They're always having the same thing home, and they come here to, to actually the first thing actually, where, where to go to eat. You know. I think I think yes, they they are coming. They are coming for food, and I would I would speak something about bread fruit. I'm very passionate about bread fruit, and I, I did I did this cooking show with a guy um, called Ainsley Harriet a few years ago, and I did roast bread fruit on on this thing, and to this day people come to the restaurant from the UK and they and ask for this bread fruit. If I don't like bread fruit, the the vets, you know, they come, they came specifically for for the bread fruit. So I think there's definitely a demand for that. I mean, they got some Michelin star chefs where they come from. They can they can get a good meal, hundred percent. I'm not denying that. So when they kind of barbecue, they're looking for something different. They're looking to taste something different and experience something different. You know, a bread fruit. Never had a bread fruit before. You ever had a bread fruit? Yeah, I had a bread fruit when I went to Barbados. You know, at Chef Damien, called the kitchen. Yeah. But, <laughs> Also, but you can't you can't resist the seed though because when you put the two of them together, like I live here, right? But when I eat something on the beach mm -hmm. and I hear the waves in the background, whatever that is, that that playing it part too, you know, that making this experience a whole a whole thing. Everything is is working to get the sound of the ocean, the smell of the salt, the food, and this is a package. Yes, it's true. It is a package. I mean, we can never get away. As much as we, we talk about diversifying, and, and we do need to diversify into other areas to spread that tourism dollar and create job opportunities, mm. et cetera, for people, business opportunities. Because I guess when people go and lounge on the beach, money's not being made as opposed to culinary or yeah. cultural heritage or health and wellness, where they tend to spread out to businesses or entrepreneurs mm. and mm -hmm. give them business. But 
yes, you're absolutely correct. The fusion of, of the right. natural assets and the beach and the sea and good food is unbeatable. Yeah, sure. yeah cul sure. culinary tours is where, is mm -hmm. where I think we, we, we need to do. And a, a lot of people have been requesting this um, from overseas. I had some cruise ships that talked to me about it. They, want, they don't just want to come to your restaurant and I cook them food. They want a whole experience. So they want to go... They want to go peg farms and, and walk out, and then they do the cooking there, or you know, they want to do, uh, do a rum shop. Correct. They want to do a roast barefoot thing on the <laughs> beach, you know, and they want the, the, the roast fish and the yeah. roast barefoot. Yeah. They don't just want to go and sit down in a restaurant. They need to be out there experiencing yeah. everything. We call them now, they're no longer sight seers, they're sight doers. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the modern day traveler. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. It's experiential. They want learning experiences. Correct. They want to, e exactly. to be involved with it. Hands they want on. to, yeah. you know, me smell, touch, taste, feel. Correct. And it's and also great content happening. for them. We live in a social media world, and, and they, they they can kind of barbed us and they could take a picture of the dish or they, or they could do a, a video of like here I am in, in a terms bon, of bonfire in front of you. Yeah. Money yeah. cannot pay for that. Yeah. And if we give them the experiences they're looking for, they will then go on and do their thing on social media. Correct. They do, they're doing the work for us now. Yeah. Yeah. And we laughing all the way to the bank because Correct. that saves us marketing dollars. It just, you know, because and people trust more what their peers, what they see it, from their peers' yeah, exactly. testimonies yes, yes, than yes. market and speak anyway. Word so to have yeah. them pushing or selling for us is more credible and trustworthy and more invaluable. So you're absolutely correct. Give yeah. them those moments, those selfie or those social media yeah. moments, and we go to the next level. That's yeah. absolutely true. Yeah. So in terms of food, what is your favorite type of food? To Honestly... Cook? Anything Bajan. I love um, I love Caribbean flavors. I love I love Barbadian flavors. One in the same. Um, I like to I like to involve art in my food. I like to involve story in my food. I love to I love to merge because I'm a poet as well. I remember Damien last week. You yeah. still do spoken you, word? Yeah, correct. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a poet, so I I I found a way to to merge you two. Um, I like to play with um, a lot of seafoods. Um, I like light, healthy foods, fresh. I don't really, I don't really like to do a lot of uh, heavy stuff because you know, because of the health restrictions now and stuff. People, pe I find people have a lot of allergies. People want um, lighter stuff because they're exercising. They're on a, on a new diet, so I more tailor my stuff now to for them. You know. For the people that like, also for people that like, you know, heavy, heavy food. But I more, you know, I more tend to go into the direction of a more healthy diet kind of stuff because that's my, I, I, I prefer that. So you see that in the, the food trends that are currently yeah for known, sure because yeah, people, I realize something that I'm seeing a lot of like plant based options yeah, now plant. are taking center stage yeah. because oh, yeah. it has a lot to do too with sustainability and reducing correct, the carbon correct, footprint correct. because meat causes gas emissions yeah. and a lot of celebrities are doing it. I saw, a, a, I think it was a Michelin star, um, it was called 11 Madison. 11, yeah, I saw yeah, they know 11, they, know they have gone yeah, completely plant-based. I mean, you see that I mean, happening. That's crazy though, I think that's crazy. I'm yeah, like, that's, that's, but I don't know if they've done crazy. the research, I don't know, because for uh, I, uh, for a restaurant like that, that is that, you know, established, well right? established yeah. in esteem, to decide we are making such a drastic change i'm like are these fellas saying the tip of the iceberg and the curve that is what is coming and they're getting ahead of it or is that totally crazy i, I think he just might be crazy to be honest with you <laughs> these chefs, chefs, I, are, chefs are crazy he might be he's just at exactly, the top, right? top of his game and you i top your game for so long it's like all right i need a new challenge right let's do let's Straight see if we can pull this off like i don't I, that's my thinking that what he's going to i wouldn't do it because but. i know that's that's what the try everywhere you look plant-based options plant-based menu items people are turning straight to plant a plant-based diet i mean i think personally i you know i mean i i understand it and you know yeah. consciously i think i have reduced my meat intake because you're just like okay let me make my contribution mm. but i wouldn't yeah, i still eat meat chicken and i would yeah. still take the all yeah. steak and i eat meat but um pigtail and yeah. you know stuff like that <laughs> healthy stuff like that. okay <laughs> or healthy stuff like that but I, I take it in moderation but i um this plant base, and I understand why this is happening, and I, I know the global trend towards mm. reducing your carbon footprint and those carbon emissions, because we're destroying Mother Earth. Right? Global warming is real and climate change, mm. and if that is one way that we could save the planet. But how widespread? Like, are you all seeing people come in and 
like you said, people are yeah, looking for like me because yeah, we want yeah, to be yeah, healthy, sure, but yeah. you know, um, are you seeing this more and more? Like, yeah. is this really a trend happening? Uh, and y'all are seeing it reflected in the requests coming to you? Yes. 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 100%. 100%. Yes. Are there, does your menu, are you switching your menu to reflect I have, to have some options? I have, I have a vegan I menu. I think you do. I think on the bottom you had some, some plant-based well, items. No, I, no, I, I put, yeah, that was before. I actually now have a, a bigger, a full, vegan. A, a full vegan menu. Because really? I have always been. Very good. My wife does plant-based um, food. My wife is a chef as well. Uh, she does plant-based, but she more does meal prep and catering for people not in an actual restaurant. Um, but usually, as, as most, most chefs, and they, they hear vegans and they're like, no. <laughs> but do y'all realize that this is just like cryptocurrency? That's maybe the new normal. That when you correct. want jokes yeah, out, yeah, you realize yeah, no yeah. way. But well, then this I did. I did. Happening. I did the vegan menu, and and the amount of people that were coming for this vegan menu was like, all right, got I got this. This is a big. This is a big that thing. Is interesting. Even is. even meat eaters, they're just they're just doing it to so just a a, bread, you correct. You yeah. just come. Yeah. You just taking a bread, and you can still eat meat. But you know what? Maybe tonight let me do, just do, do yeah, let me exactly. do plant based. Correct. So. I don't doubt that he's going to be full of the road, but again, they have, um, uh, there's big, you can, you got a lot of people it's that are Millions of people. Correct. I guess it's New York City, so you're fine, you know, you know people he, who, he, Barbados, he yes, you have a lot of people eating it, but I, like I, I, I cannot sustain it. He a did full his due diligence before he made such a drastic change that he, I don't think if you have a restaurant that's that esteemed that you make such a drastic change unless you knew, know what is coming. Like for example, you were telling me your vegan menu is very popular. You're seeing mm. it even in your personal yeah, yeah, yeah. chef work. For sure. Do you all think that th that enough m menus in Barbados, is this, especially for visitors coming in that have, you know, they're vegan or they mm. have celiac disease and they want gluten free and all these different things that we need to understand. Like, for example, I'm, and they're asking you, they want to know what's going in their food. People want to mm. know who's producing it, how are you producing it. People are taking a real interest yeah. in the techniques, how it's cooked, where it came from. It came I was from. in the market um, down there at Spring Garden a couple of weeks ago, and I go to the gentleman who does the soft serve. Like, I live for that. Like, every yeah, week, yeah, yeah. you know, carrot. Yeah, know, Last yeah. week, he had tamarind and sorrel. We had um, ginger and cucumber. Oh, salt. my God. Mm. Look. Yeah. So I go down the market for my yeah. soft serve. And um, there was a young lady who kind of cut in front of me. She looked millennial. She was in her 20s. She was dressed in like workout clothes. Mm -hmm. And she started to ask him, what's in it? And really pepper this man with questions. Soy, what do you Do you make ice? But, and mm -hmm. I was standing behind her. First of all, I was like, shoot, because she cut in front of yeah. me. I had to wait to get my ice cream. But I started to listen. And I was like, this is the new normal, where yeah. you are being asked. And if you are not on your game to be able to answer yeah. and tell these people what went in the food, and he did an excellent job. And she then said, she after all of that, she didn't want it because it was soy milk and she can't take soy. Right. But he really was able to, any question to answer, because yeah. he makes it, so he knows what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm saying, that's where we probably need to get to in this new world order where they're going to be asking you what went in the food. We're moving now to like plant-based and you have shifted and so have you. I do not know if how many restaurants they have that are offering. I, I've seen a, a improvement yeah. where you could go and get, before you used mm. to get a little salad or two little things at the bottom, I'm seeing Correct. the expansion of menus. Yeah, you've seen effort going and to it. You've seen some yes. effort going to it because I think everybody realizing this is that's, the that's direction the world is right going now. in yeah. and mm -hmm. it may not just be a trend that will go away. This may be the the new normal for the foreseeable future. Yeah. So that's that's really, really good. So in terms of you and, you and cooking what do you in terms of trends or in terms of what you like to do or in terms of something that's very important and i realize you haven't spoken as yet about your latest venture your pivot that's the um rude boy rabbit rude boy Rami, yeah. yes <laughs> and i think that was very like ingenious where you you know realize one side here you pivot and do something new love the logo yeah yeah i like, I like the whoever logo, did yeah. that logo was on point yeah and i like the rude boy ramen name etc because <laughs> when i saw your um article his was, I scrolled across and saw him with his Ruboy Ramen because okay. I didn't know about it. So I scrolled from you, I went in for you mm -hmm. and then went across to Damien. And um, how is that going? I mean, that's street food. That's also very, you know, street food is very, very popular around the yeah. world and convenient and people just love a good bowl or plate or a wrapping of street yeah. food. Yeah, it was, I mean, well, we, we, we started it just because we weren't saying saying cheap because that's, that's when COVID had no, no happened. That, mm. was the, that was the first lockdown, yeah, two lockdowns. So that was right after the first lockdown we opened, we opened that to get something 
just cheap and quick and some and something different. But it also because Cot Hill Kitchen was obviously the numbers were down when we had open up. I had all this stuff. I didn't want to get rid of none of them. Their hours, so the, the hours were a little less. So that's where the ramen, the ramen spot helped. No, because no, the no, the fellas getting some more hours here. Cause they're my guys from Cot Hill Kitchen. That that's where that's where it ramen. So mm. everything. Know, so ramen going good? Are you finding the, the 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 public has? Yeah, to it? yeah. To be honest, the 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 ramen, I I didn't think it would be that popular on social media like the my social team that manages Cotter Kitchen and the the ramen because my partner she does social media and she says out of all the restaurants they manage the rude boy ramen one is the page that people are most um active on Even name always DMing like them posting so anything cool. yes so I mean it's 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 cool, a little side hustle, you gotta go, a little yeah, side hustle in, side these, hustle in these things. Uh, particularly where people are looking for that type of fear, which is very, very important, and, and it, which leads me to something we were talking about earlier in terms of how um, the culinary scene has evolved in Barbados, where before mm. it was just like a restaurant, may it been a high end restaurant, and probably Chaffet, mm. one or two in between. You now have so many categories of, you know, it could be street yeah. food, it could be food of the back of a, a, a you know I mean it could be a village bakery so many street food uh, food trucks um foodie tours like well, liquor stores in town yeah, there's so there's many different categories that we didn't have years ago do y'all see this as a good sign that we're moving in the right direction yeah for sure i think yeah, yeah. even you know in street food yeah well that, that's 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 the thing about but that's covid too right well yeah COVID, a lot of, a lot of chefs are out of work right so you got all this, all this, all this talent, yeah. with nothing to do. You know what? Maybe somebody said, you know what? Let me, let me, let me put a little, a little five or ten. Let me buy a little container and let me set up shop. So you can see a lot of that, a lot of that started to pop up. Mm -hmm. Word in Square, that full. For sure. I think they're doing other, other, other um, spots that I know of that are doing the same concept. So you're gonna see a, a lot of that. But I think if there was one place, like there were certain things this COVID that made money, supermarkets, pharmacies, gas stations, and food. Once the food wasn't shut down, yeah. and people could have access to food, food was an area that kind of made money. And you were very fortunate because people were looking, obviously, because of COVID for personalized type Correct. of setting, and yeah. you came as a personal chef. So mm. it kind of worked for you. And then you pivoted yeah. with Ruboy Ramen and kind of adapted to the new environment. Correct. Because that's the kind of food that, that was selling these things. Obviously, uh, people don't have the, the money to spend like they had before. Yeah. Yeah. So that 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 price point is where is where you where you need yeah, to be. That's a sweet spot. Yeah. That's a sweet spot. Correct. Well, in terms of, like I said earlier, um, and we spoke about you being chef of the year, and the team has won the team of the gold several different times, and I've noticed, and this is me, mm -hmm. that when this happens and the teams come back, they pretty much disappear into obscurity. From what I could see, maybe that's not no, true. No, that's 100% true. F f until the next year when they go away again, and then you will suddenly hear that y'all are doing the trials, mm -hmm. and then they go away and win goal again, and then the circle. How do you think, I think that's sad, personally, yeah, I've yeah, always yeah. felt that way. We feel because that I'm reason. saying this is a significant competitive advantage for Barbados that we are squandering, and we need to utilize, I think, same of you were the best chef in the region because you won. Mm -hmm. Once the team wins goal, I consider them to be the best chefs in Correct. the region. Yeah. And that is very, very important for Barbados as a tourist destination. How do you think we could utilize, and just like both of you, because even if you're not a team, we could still, because even like mm -hmm. you or any other chef, utilize these supremely talented young men and women who go away, cook their hearts out, put mm -hmm. Barbados on a plate, Mm -hmm. along with their hearts because that's what you do because yeah. when y'all go y'all do real caribbean food huh? good and y'all do a lot of different flavors and real exciting things on a plate Correct. We, t and we train we train hard for it too for and long, you train for very long, very hard how times. can we make it worth the while of these people who train because you're telling me now it's qualifying i did just walk in and they qualified tried to go for years mm -hmm. and lost and then you no, persevered you and won how do can we utilize these young people on a year-round basis to promote Barbados as a culinary destination and to give them their rightful due mm. um, and, and, and to give them the, the recognition and the celebration that they deserve. Mm. Uh, because I, I don't know if Barbados know, they're probably reading paper, these people win, but then when you disappear under the radar, 
you don't get that adulation and reverence on a year-round no. basis. And I think y'all should be, I call the mixologists rock stars in their own right. Same thing with mm. the chefs all year round. Where you're revered and you are out in the public's eye and the world knows about you and the world mm -hmm. is coming to Barbados because th this is the best of the best is from Barbados. So. It's, something, it's something that we've, we've um, talked about many times over the years with the team. Um, I give you an example, Trinidad, when Trinidad, when Trinidad go home, right, because they see Trinidad celebration, Trinidad at the airport, the men's got steel pans, steel walkers, big food, it'd be a big fit. Barbados came home, they had two reporters and then some members from the BHTA. I think maybe a BTM like one year. That was it. That's when we come back, we go medals, it just be like we just regular people don't get off the plane. It's a little disappointing, right? To be honest. Um, and then and then that's it. Until next year when the team goes again. Nobody Why do you think that happens? Because the mixologists said the same thing. They go mm -hmm. away revered rock stars, world-class treatment, get back to Barbados. Yeah. Do you think we don't elevate the art enough in terms of food and beverage and people who are talented? Do you, why is it not the same? Is it just across, the, like where Trinidad completely celebrates and throws a yeah. fight and really reveres? Why do you think that we, or what do you think we have to do? I'm not gonna ask you, why do you think? What do you think we have to do to be better in this area? Do you think we have to promote more? We have to kind of promote, do things promote, yeah. throughout the year? Correct. So you keep top of mind as opposed to just disappearing, everybody forgets. Yeah, do we that, need to elevate it do. more? Yeah. You gotta you gotta you gotta put on you gotta the whole the whole year you gotta do something with it. Let let Barbados know that we do have a, a team that represents the island in in, in culinary. And wins. Yeah, and wins, right? And now it's some they just don't know. So it's not really a, a, a cool thing is it already fellas gonna do the cut like you know. <laughs> I guess I guess drafts have got that same kind of same kind of vibe. It's just not an exciting thing. I, I don't know who's <laughs> personally. I don't know. So maybe maybe that's just it's it's only just gotta let people know, and and events. Recently, they've been using the Barbados team for um, food and rum. But I think that was just the last one they did. So that that, that was a step in the right direction, um, exposing Barbados to the to yes. the team. But I it think was a step in the right direction. But I think it needs to be more of that. It needs it needs to be a lot a lot of promoting of the guys. They do use them to send them overseas, but But what I think is whereas with the mixologists, I'd ask them, do you think we need to do a mixology festival or a series of festivals where you take second billing, even in the food and rum, to the cooking where you in your own right have your own. Do you think we need to do more food festivals? Yeah, that's that's always every festival. Yeah. I think we need to do that throughout, throughout, throughout the year. Throughout the year. And it can be yeah. different types of festivals. It can yeah. be, you know what I mean? But but the the, the main uh, a different festival but the common denominator is the chefs will take top billing, all of you. Yeah. Out there really showing it and there's a lot of promotion and attention on that. Yeah. And the world then the eyes of the world will be on us because great things will be coming out. People will be challenged to take it to the next level and, Correct. and to do it, the barbe you know, our Caribbean cuisine. And because mm. the magic y'all do on a plate, maybe if we did more of those things, it would help yeah. I, I think build so. the awareness. Correct. I think the festival is definitely, definitely the way to go. So who, who gonna do it then? <laughs> How are we gonna do this? Is that you think at a national level or should like the private sector probably put on festivals? Because first we have to hold them what, in what? high esteem and value them. Correct how we could best get our chefs on the map and you know by if it was by promotion right, or creating a great awareness uh, year round festivals. Types of festivals and different fun competitions and stuff like that. Competitions like tasting I think, I think. chefs tables. There's so many different ways. Fun yeah. competitions like in exotic places, like one in Farley Hill, one down in Bashiba, one down in a gully somewhere where is exotic, eclectic yeah. locations but Right, Food but you is the common denominator. Turn them, turn, turn them into, turn them into stars. And like, like I said, you do one competition a year. That's to make the Barbados team. Nifka, they don't do Nifka anymore. But that's it. There's no other culinary competition for the rest of the year. Right. When I was, when I was young, when I was no studying, when I was at Palm Marine, Chef Edie had um, Julian chefs, and I used to watch Julian chefs all the time. That's when I, that's when I saw um, Michael Harrison, who's I have a enough respect for Michael Harrison, yeah. uh, Henderson Butcher, John Hazard, all these, all these 
big chefs. They're and really I, I watch them. I, I, I love watching it. Mm -hmm. So I think they can do. You, you had Edie in one of the other episodes. Tell, tell yeah. Edie, go bring back Julian Chefs. But I can tell Edie. Edie Barbados team. Because Edie is really the pioneer. Anybody who's passed through at some point or the other would have connected with Edie in mm. terms of, you know, the, and I like what he did in terms of he's really the developmental aspect of the chefs. Yeah. I'm sure any chef around now would have passed through Edie, even if it's at BCC or wherever. And I think, you know, we really have to pay homage to him in terms of the phenomenal role he has played in the development of, of the culinary art in this country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I will definitely, he'll be very happy to hear you say that, that you remember. And because, you know, yeah. sometimes where maybe he may not have gotten the appreciation that that should have been given to him. Mm. And to know that things like Julius Chefs, that chefs like yourself yeah, yeah. would sure, have watched sure. and been inspired by it. So mm -hmm. all is not law, Chef Edie. The, you know, this yeah. generation now of, of really talented chefs, you inspired them. And we, we bring it back Julius Chefs. I think I think he should. I think it'd be cool. But that would get people to know about the Barbados team now. Because we do a competition, no, nobody don't really know about the competition. No. I got chefs that's come and ask me, how is my team? Well, even even you, I told you how to make team. Yeah. There's a competition mm -hmm. that nobody sees, unless you just like you know your wife or something that just comes and watches it. Right. But because too, even when y'all do the different plates, certain people are invited, not open up to do. I mean, actually, it's open to the public. Oh, it's open to the public. Oh, but no one knows, right? It's open to the public. Oh. And it's put up put up screens and thing and all. Yeah. Right. Well, maybe when we could do it and get the public more invested and involved. That yeah. would also assist. So we, so everything is there. The ingredients are there. We just need to do things differently. And I believe mm. just by making a few tweaks and changes, we can bring about the necessary change that will take mm. um, our talented people to the next level, which in turn would assist us mm -hmm. from a culinary tourism destination perspective. Everything is linked, and mm. we we all we, everything is there. We just have to do a couple of things differently. Align the planets, yeah. and and I think wondrous things are going to happen. Um, so, in in I know that you do the, your personal chef, and mm -hmm. you know I. Any thoughts in terms of how you see the future going for the culinary space or the culinary art in Barbados? Do you? I don't know if you all mentor any people. Do you see any young people? Do you see yeah, this yeah, as yeah. a way for like there's a assembly line? Because I think that we have such great chefs in Barbados. And you mentioned some, and I worked with mm -hmm. Michael Hines and John Hazard and Michael Harrison. That mm -hmm. level of guy, I know those, I don't want to call them old fellas, but that yeah. layer of guys that were the layer just above yeah. y'all. I know about them. And um, as I said, I know Chef Edie, everybody knows Chef Edie. And I think that um, we're talking about Generation Next now and how we're going to get people involved. Because I'm thinking that if you are revered, younger people will look and say oh my god even mm. though they want to do it but it looks like a, something where this is a really excellent um, career choice yeah. because the opportunities are there you're appreciated you're valued and i think once we do that um generation next is secure even though i believe it's secure regardless yeah because for sure. there's a lot of interest in the area isn't yeah, there yeah there's, there, there is a lot of interest in the area i got a lot of young chefs um you know reaching out wanting to run ideas, bounce ideas, um, come to work to see how, you know, how, how, how they could improve the technique, some, something I might, might have done that, you know, they want to they wanna learn. Yes. You know, always willing and open to, 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 to help and assist. Um, I find the, the next generation of chefs coming up, they, as, as Damien said, they, a lot of them have a lot of passion. Um, they're willing to be open-minded about stuff uh, because of social media and stuff um, research is more accessible um, so with being researched more accessible it, it gives you an idea how to create things better in your own way um, using different techniques and merging those techniques with what you already know and I find a lot of them are, are, are trying new things you know and I think I think the, the culinary scene is in good hands. Um, always room for improvement. So you can't you could have, you can never say you know your master something is is always some type of room for improvement. So um, hopefully when you pass it back on, mm. you know the younger ones willing and able and to push forward. That that all, all depends on the chef too. Is 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 
like you said, when I opened Cotter Kitchen, I took all of my guys that set up a sushi. I went to Pomerine, mm -hmm. I talked to my old chefs, and I was like, listen, fellas, give me a list of the, the top chefs that you have here. I, don't, I wasn't really interested how they did in mass or Caribbean law. I wanted them to be top in the cooking practical. I took them, and they're, they've been with me. They're still there. There's five years now, they're, they're all still there. I was fortunate because in 2016 when I had one thing, my name was buzzing, and maybe you don't recognize the team, but I kind of stand out when you see it in the paper, right? The white guy with the beard and tattoos. Well, yeah. Right? <laughs> so, I'm, I'm so glad they, you so said they, it, and I did it. I wanted to say it. Right. But when I, I first saw it, it was this white guy. Correct. I, 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 on I, the team and actually got away and win it. I thought that was great. I mean, yeah. that sounds bad, but yeah. you did stand out because I, I, you I, I stand were like out. the so, only so white so guy, yeah. that major <laughs> fella that was in the thing. So, <laughs> they, so they knew who I was, so they were excited to work with me. Like, my name was cool like, uh -huh. to, to work, so a lot of them want to work with me. And, and I still bring on other, I don't have room for others, but they can, they can come and work. For um, for free and and they mm -hmm. come and just to learn the thing. I have no problem with that. I like I like thing, and I'm I run my kitchen the way that I always I always wanted to run it. Like I wanted to take. Don't mean you may not have no experience. I can take you. I'm not gonna stick you in this section forever. I can bring you across here and and teach you teach you the fish section, the meat right, section. Right, right, right. And that's why I did with them because I worked at places and they can call the name. I work at the when I first came out of school for three years and then but that man stuck me on a, on a grill. Not grilling meat, grilling vegetables for three years. I went, I studied overseas. Wow. I paid about a loan for 10 years for that. And this man will refuse to beg you, say, Chef, you could let me learn another section. Nah, three years. Grilling so vegetables? When they, so when they give you that resignation, the hey, was gone. Tapas, Franco Parisi, fantastic chef. He, he, he gave me the opportunity to, to put things on the menu and, and to create things, test them on him for his dinner. Every night I cook dinner for him. Because I, I, I was just hungry for it. Every night I would cook dinner just to throw a dish on him. And he put it on the menu. And I wanted to be that kind of chef. And I'm happy that I'm, I'm, I'm that way with, with my guys. And, and yeah. we, we, they have a lot of respect for me. I have a lot of respect mm. for them. We just, it's, it's a cool... So you're the cool chef. Cool, cool environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's very important that you do that, though. That yeah. you bring along Generation Next. And you know what it was like when you were doing it. And yeah. the frustration. And you don't do it to them. Yeah, and you give sure. them that well-rounded yeah. opportunity. I mm. think, and, and make a difference uh, for Generation X, because that's what makes us all worthwhile. So, like, any final words? Gentlemen, I really, really enjoyed this conversation. Any, like, in terms I of you, I mean, <laughs> 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 what do you see for the future? You're looking forward, you know, we are now getting to the end of COVID. Mm -hmm. Do you think the future is bright? Yeah, I, in I, terms I of think culinary in general for I Barbados, as long for as you people have specifically? To, as long as people have to eat. And, that and they is do. A, that is a must. You've got that right. I think the future is bright. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I'm basically looking forward to um, continue on doing more pop-ups, doing, um, doing more culinary experiences, because that's what I'm really into. Um, giving culinary experiences, telling more stories, telling the, mm. the Barbadian story, the Bajan story, the Caribbean story. That's what people want. They want your story. Yeah, to both locals and to, to, to ones coming in. Um, so that's, that's where my, my niche is and my love. And I want to continue on that path, just giving more experiences in different ways, different avenues. Um, things that haven't been, been tried already, you know. I, I'm oh, all in. Yeah. Yes. So that's, that's my thing, my whole thing. Okay, great. Well, Barbados, look out for Chef Damien Reed. <laughs> I have to read, decipher yes, read, between read. the two of you all. And I'm sure that your reputation already precedes you. And um, I wish you all the best in the future. I think you're going to go from strength to strength. Because I know one of the projects you're currently working on. And I think you're going to just blow everything out of the water. And um, thank you. Barbados will, they, they will sing your name for the <laughs> Once they realize this is Damien. <laughs> and I know uh, we've been singing at yours because we know you uh, <laughs> because you are more out there um, than Danny. But I think Damien is really making a name for himself, um, like a quiet storm. And yeah. I'm sure, I you know, he's out there. Me and Damien actually yeah, we met Palm Marine together. Well. Yeah. You used to sit there with the sale library. I'm reading the same, reading the same, same books. books. Yeah. He used to get trouble. He was still giving trouble. Or you still nah, still just the library not, just not out for me, talking not about for food. The whole but this time, my boy was <laughs> focused. But yeah. do you have the same, you know, in hope and, and, and positivity in terms of where we are going and I, how I, things are going to turn out. I, I, like, I like the direction we're, we're, mm -hmm. we're going and, and I'm happy. 
we should get rid of all the overseas chefs. <laughs> 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 I let you be real. You're my lawyer. I, I, I let I, you I be real. <laughs> <laughs> because I know it's been frustrating probably for people like yourself. I, I've spoken to others. I mean, I spoke to Chef Eddie, and he yeah. also was very passionate about, you know, having to sit and take second billing uh, for so many years when, in many cases, they could have got the job done. Correct. So I understand Correct. what you're saying. And um, I agree with you. And... Um, I think that we're. I think it's a good time to be a chef. That's why the youngsters is a good time for them to come on board because I think we're at the point where we're yeah. turning a corner to really embrace mm -hmm. our local food, our local talent. You know, I me. Mean? We have a good thing going on the culinary scene, and I believe with a little structure around it, we will take this mm -hmm. to the next level. I think it's already there, yeah. but we can definitely seal the deal and really um, put our stamp. I, wa I want to say one more thing. I know you had any questions, but we didn't get there, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it relates to this conversation. There was a question that you wanted to know if we cook for any celebrities. Yes. Last year, when Drake was in Barbados, mm -hmm. Drake came and caught her kitchen, right? Mm -hmm. What Drake had now, next, I, I can tell you what he had. The next day, somebody called and said, Damien, that you cooked something with Drake last night. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You may want, you, you may want it again. That was roast breadfruit. Breadfruit again. That is roast breadfruit. You got a whole breadfruit. That Drake can't eat. Barbados never underestimate the almighty breadfruit ever again. The roast breadfruit. The roast breadfruit. The man. Every story you gave me today was a breadfruit list. Breadfruit on my hand. This is breadfruit. A roast breadfruit tattoo. Be bow down to the almighty breadfruit. But Drake, Drake, Drake can't eat breadfruit. Drake sat back down for some more breadfruit. I went. He must never had it in his life. He called. Somebody called me. But he's a Rihanna boy. Maybe he had it before. I don't know. You know, he was here before. But that's true. Maybe I don't know. They went on the villa and they cooked for them. It was. It was. It was breadfruit. Wow. And he loved it. It was breadfruit. You see, the celebrities, the celebrities can't get enough. So that's good because that was typically the trend, whatever they like, and they then. You know, send it out. It goes viral, and then everybody. Yeah, he was hoping he do a post, so he just do one with Shafet, but he do a Shafet post. I think he, he was sending that to Rihanna. He do a Shafet post. He do a yeah, yeah. You didn't make the grade. You say that wrong? Yes. Musa, Musa, the grandma. grandma. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure he loved it. I'm sure he loved that. It's well, that's exactly. a good story. That's a good story. Great. Gentlemen, I want to thank you so much. This has been such an enlightening conversation. I want to wish you all the very best. Continue doing what you're doing. I'm telling Barbados to look out for my two Damians. Yeah. Head down to sh Cocktail Kitchen and get some Rue Boy ramen and hook up with my boy here to have that fantastic yeah. personalized dinner, lunch, you know, correct, beach correct. experience. Because you come from two kind of different worlds. But yep. if there's one thing you have in common is that you're spectacular, phenomenal chefs and you're doing great work out there. And you're role models to be emulated by the next generation of chefs. So Thank I will you. definitely be looking out for you. I'm going to come and visit. I haven't been to Cocktail Kitchen in a long time. I yeah. will be coming because I, I looked at the menu mm. and I yeah, like there were some changes, but I can live with yeah, them. They're keep, equally keep, as good. Yeah, we keep it easy. Keep and it. I will be hooking up with you and, you know, I've never tasted your food. So I will definitely be hooking up with you and, and seeing what it is that you're out there doing, the magic you're creating. Thank you. So I want to thank you so much and all the very best. God bless. We're almost turning that corner. Yeah. Things are about to get better, gentlemen. For sure. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks right. as well.